The Vision Pro launched with over 600 apps made specifically for it. I spent the last three weeks testing and taking notes on every single one. In this video, we're going to talk about it and break it down by category. Some of them were incredibly exciting, others were kind of concerning, and some of them I just don't think were worth the money. First category is education, and there are 40 apps here. The first application is a periodic table, but it has an interesting twist because once you click on an element, you can actually pull the element towards you and have a 3D version of it. I feel like in school I had to memorize a periodic table and if there was this visual component it would have made it a lot easier. It also just kind of lights me up that we're making learning more engaging and this is a perfect example of the Vision Pro use case coming in clutch. And the next education app that I really liked was a drawing app called Drawing Desk where you can use your hands to draw. It reminded me a lot of the Apple version. The one that really stood out to me was an app called Edgeforge which is an AI powered education app so you can put in vocabulary and then it will generate a test quiz for you using AI. And then there was an app that I spent $49 on so super expensive but wild and I'm going to show it to you right now. So, wow, this is so crazy in the coffee shop. Basically, it shows you a person's torso, and then you can zoom in and see the different aspects of the heart, like the valve, the um, cardiac chambers, etc., and look at them in incredible detail. There was also a free version of this application that had less information, but I think the utility for someone that isn't a surgeon, I probably could get the same enjoyment out of the free version over spending $50 on an app. Both lit me up and made me feel really excited about the prospect of learning with this type of mixed reality. There's also a surprising number of plant apps here. I'm not a gardener, so these did not speak to me, but I tried out all of them, obviously, for this video. And the other apps that I really used a lot were the planetary ones. So there's an app called Solar, and this solar application shows a planet in three dimensions. You can see where the Earth is in relation to the Moon and Mars. But there was one here that was genuinely incredible called Foxer. It has this cosmic calendar layout where you can see the planets in relation to each other and the Milky Way, and it takes up your whole field of vision that I feel like it's very easy to forget where you are in the moment. And that's what's so exciting to me because there are tons of applications that are available for iPhone and iPad, but the applications that are most exciting for the Vision Pro are the ones that actually take advantage of this use case for the Vision Pro. And I think it's really up to developers to make this product valuable. Like Apple put a lot of the hardware in, but developers are going to make it shine based on what they make for it. Entertainment's the next category. I feel like a lot of people buy the Vision Pro for entertainment. And there are a lot of great apps here, and also notably some apps missing. There's no Netflix app or YouTube app. So there are two third-party YouTube apps that I tried that are great. One of them is paid $4.99, but it's really clean, simple experience, and it makes it so you can watch YouTube videos on here without going to Safari. But then it gets some great applications like the MLB and the NBA have incredibly immersive apps for the Vision Pro. I was blown away by them. A tweet went viral recently of the NBA immersive experience because it kind of elevates the game where I feel like if you're an avid basketball fan, you can really enjoy it. And then if you're not, it can kind of educate you whilst the game is going on. There were some other random apps that I tried here that I didn't like as much and was a little bit sketched out by. They didn't have a lot of ratings and they were offering things like classical TV or free live TV. They were kind of weird. I tried out every single application on this list, so there definitely were some weird ones, and also um, apps that didn't have a lot of reviews, which honestly, I admire developers for making anything. Like, it's so hard to get started on anything, and I could not code any of these apps, but some of them I just don't think were that great or worth the cost if they were paid or worth the time if they were free. The next app is an app called Taper, which allows you to like dance around to your music with your hands, and then an app called SNBD, which is a spatial audio app, and the Vision Pro actually has spatial audio depending on if you're a using the speakers on it or be using airpods pro like the new version which means that if developers want to they can have sounds come from different directions which fully immerses you in the environment and then there's an app called ai girlfriend which i of course tried and i kind of think it's a nightmare so i'm going to show it to you and we're going to talk about it so ai girlfriend is a thing that has been memed a lot online but the vision pro has it and i actually think it's problematic because you have the, the spatial element of it as well you put in what your name is and then if i go to the next slide here it says what's her name so you end up naming the person and then you can pick the eye color so for example let's say brown eyes and then there's also the persona of like human superhuman gamer etc and on top of it it's 3.99 a week if you want to uh, unlock emotional intelligence and personal companionship or you can buy it for $30 once and keep it forever and once you have it up here it shows you a picture of the girlfriend that you selected and then you can have a conversation with um, the AI so for example I can pop this open and say hey how's your day going 
They were back, hey babe, my day's going great, just thinking about spending the weekend with you. I mean, it just gets worse and worse. The reason why this is so problematic to me is because I feel like AI is the worst it's ever going to be. If AI gets better, like the conversation feels more real, and then at the same time, this hardware tech develops to make it actually feel like someone's in the room with you, I think it's going to create a population that is maybe like too dependent on it. And I feel like that is not a net positive, like in-person social interaction is I feel like where we get a lot of our fulfillment and joy from. So that is an app that really gave me the ick, but it's wild to see that it was one of the 600 apps that first launched for the Vision Pro. The next category is developer tools. There are 21 apps in this category that I tested. I am not a developer, so the learning curve for some of these was kind of high. There was one called Project Graveyard, which is 99 cents, and it lets you as a developer make like a tombstone for either like a failed application or an application that you've kind of put to rest. The other interesting ones in this uh, developer tools part was a symbols pack. There were so many of these apps that basically let you easily copy and paste symbols. So as you're coding or designing the application, you have easy access to Apple symbols. Wow, the amount of birds right now is pretty unreal. The next category is books. There were a bunch of religious texts actually. Also, just to give a little behind the scenes of this project, it was around like 30 or 40 hours in the head Set. Also wearing the Vision Pro for a very extended period of time, like the hours I was wearing it until like 2 or 3 a.m. Um, definitely left like some pretty significant marks. It was uncomfortable after an extended period of time. I talked more about that in the full review. For like normal use, it's completely fine. It's the other category that I thought was interesting is the lifestyle category. There are 18 apps in this category. There's one app called Planner 5D, which was a room and home design app, and it has an immersive mode so you can kind of lay out and plan what you want your future home to look like or if you're redoing something. And then Zillow Immerse. So Zillow is a very popular app that a lot of people go on frequently, but this immersive view is interesting. It takes like viewing a dream house to another level. The music category had 27 apps and there was one that went viral on Twitter that I was incredibly excited to try out because I've taken piano lessons for years and this application will show you what keys to hit whilst you're playing piano. And that one was actually $8.99. It worked really well. The way that the piano gets set up is you touch the last key with your hand and the first key with your hand so it can kind of tether where you are and configure to that. But then I actually found a free piano app. It honestly worked pretty well as well. Both of these still require you to know how to play piano a little bit, but they're amazing. And this makes me just like so inspired about all the ways that we can use spatial computing to enhance learning. Finance is the next category. There were 13 apps here. Seven out of the 13 were all budgeting apps. And this one really showed me that if you just spend a little time, you can normally find a free version of the app that you want because a lot of these have the same exact features, but some of them were paid. Some of them had recurring payments and then others were completely free. This to me though, doesn't necessarily feel like a Vision Pro specific app. Like I would prefer to do saving and expenses probably on an Excel spreadsheet or a Google sheet. Reference is the next category name. I actually uh, have no idea why it's called this, but this is one of my all time favorite categories in the video. The first one is Night Sky. It's genuinely unbelievable and awe-inspiring. It takes up an immersive view. You can see the stars. This one like gave me chills when I tried it. Tides is a niche one, but pretty cool. It will show you the high and low tides info about the ocean. So if you surf a lot or you just go to the ocean a lot, or like you're an inherently curious person like I am, that's a cool app. And then the next category was graphics and design. Um, there were a bunch of apps here, but the two that I think are really stand out are the Vision widget because you can add different widgets kind of around your environment, like a battery widget for the Vision Pro. I think that's useful. And Adobe Firefly, which never fails to blow me away. It's a generative AI application where you can put in a prompt and get an image. I put in like breakfast at midnight in Times Square and the amount of options so quickly is equally terrifying and super exciting. I also just love the idea of using that in the Vision Pro um, to create maybe a wallpaper or some digital art around you. Another cool app in this category was Art Authority Museum. This felt like an actual museum that you get to walk through. It, it's not exactly real life, but it definitely simulates it a little bit. And I thought X Explore D was also cool. It allows you to visit places all over the world. So for example, um, it has London built in. So hitting enter here and then London attractions. So it says the city of London in 3D and it has the Salt Tower, Buckingham Palace, Tower Bridge. It's apps like these that really bring to life what this is and can be as it keeps getting better. All right, then there's this next app called Epic Earth 360, which is another immersive earth experience, but I liked the other space earth versions better. Although this one has a pretty epic soundtrack that goes along with it, which definitely adds the immersion. And I feel like it's using the spatial audio well to kind of fill the room. 
The next category is productivity, and there are 80 apps that I tested in this one. So Microsoft developed three specific apps for the Apple Vision Pro, their standard Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. So they're all native to Vision Pro, which is great. Other apps that I also tried that I think are worth mentioning and interesting is uh, Freeform, that is a drawing app by Apple, and then Widgetsmith. There were so many clock apps it's actually nuts. Like I feel like many, many developers just realized that there was a lack of a clock in Vision Pro and they raced to try to get it up. There's also an app called Bezel, which is $5, which kind of feels a little expensive. It's a device mirroring app. So one of the common um, complaints with the Vision Pro is that when you're wearing it, it's a bit difficult to see your phone. While there is pass-through, it's not the sharpest thing in the world. So what this app allows you to do is mirror your phone to the Vision Pro. So when you're typing or doing something on your phone, you kind of want to look on your phone. So I feel like the way that they can elevate this application is to have the mirroring track to where your phone is in the frame so it's not just like a giant version of your phone but instead it's like passing through the display at a higher resolution so the next category is games there are 71 that I tested here and there were around like 11 or 12 that I thought were genuinely great the first one is a game called what the golf it's 3d golf and what I really like about this is it's a mixed reality game so some of them are virtual reality where it completely changes the environment that you're in and immerses you in a new fake one. But this one's cool because it just interacts with where you actually are at the moment. The next one that I think is also really cool is Lego. Sports is also a category that had a lot of different applications. I feel like the three that are really worth knowing about are the MLB, the NBA, and then also an application that is called Elite Hoops Basketball. It's a whiteboard that allows you to construct plays and drills. And when you do that, you can kind of like lay out the plays and sketch and draw. Travel is a category that had 13 apps and I didn't think that any of them were exceptional. The guides for Las Vegas and Paris are pretty cool though. And it seems like the same developer did it for multiple cities, which I admire. And then Utilities had 90 apps. Utilities had one really cool app called Lost BLE Device, and basically it connects to your Bluetooth network to help you find devices that are lost and other devices that maybe I don't have on FiMi but do have Bluetooth connectivity. Simple Countdown is just an application where you can create a countdown. I love having things to look forward to, so I love that that app plays into that. The apps that got me most excited though were really the ones that took advantage of a unique use case of the Vision Pro because I think the apps that we have on the iPhone and the Mac are really important to be here to make the Vision Pro usable, but then the apps that really make it feel worth it are the ones that extend and really integrate into the use case. So whether that be like your 3D environment or getting multiple windows so you can be a multitasking fiend, it's pretty nice. If you wanna see how the Vision Pro actually performs under like normal use, not testing out 600 apps in the day, you can click right here for the real day in life review. Or if you wanna see its comparison to the Facebook competitor after that Mark Zuckerberg video that he posted, you can click right here. Thanks so much for watching this one. Appreciate you hanging out and being here. And I will hopefully catch you in one of these two videos. Bye.